Pleased to be joined now by a guy that uh, was all layered up on the sidelines yesterday, or last week, I should say, at the wild card game between the Bills and the Steelers for Westwood One. It's former NFL quarterback Ryan Leaf joining us. And uh, Ryan, uh, why don't you why don't you give me your impressions of Buffalo weather in the evening in January? <laughs> I mean, I'm from Montana, so it. Oh yeah, it, that's right. And it was like minus 32 where I was from. Uh, my dad sent me a snapshot of it, and he said, "You know, it's you got it easy there." Well, the difference in in Buffalo, and I was educated, uh, you know, a, a lot this week was lake effect snow. Okay, mm -hmm. didn't didn't understand it, didn't know what it meant. I fully understand it now. Um, I, I I got to see the lovely city of Buffalo for four and a half days yeah. uh, to call that game. So yeah, it uh, uh, it wasn't too cold. Um, I forgot about playing football in the cold too a little bit. Um, you know, I've been, uh, I, I think I've been uh, spoiled a little bit over the, the last few years. But I tell you what, what warmed you up pretty quick was was Josh Allen and how he played in that game. Yeah, that game came down to you know, Josh. They got out to the quick lead, and then you know it was twenty-one nothing. You, you kind of wow. The Steelers were not built to get back into that game. Although they climbed back within seven points, they never had the ball trailing seven the bills got the ball right back after they closed it to seven and went down and scored that touchdown and put it away what what were your thoughts about how that game played out you know we knew coming in Steelers wanted to keep it close close to the vest and the bills you know who knew how they were going to come out and play what what were your thoughts about how that game unfolded well we're talking with Dalton Kincaid uh, after the game a little bit and and Joe Brady before it there was some things that they saw on film that they felt like they could really take advantage of and it was clear as day with the lack of linebacker depth for the Steelers, they were going to attack a Miles Jack, and they were going to use their tight ends to do it. And who, you know, easily you could see the 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 seam down the middle touchdown to Dalton and the corner route to to Dawson Knox, and that was what was really special. And then clearly, you know, Josh was going to use his legs. I loved how he used his eyes to dictate coverage too. I mean, he he manipulated coverage with his eyes so well. I I've watched a lot of NFL games this year. Now, I haven't been down on the field like I was as a sideline reporter, but still watching it from the booth, it, the the way he uses his eyes, um, he's taken the next jump. Like He really has in, in, in understanding and applying and being su successful from it. The biggest thing for me is that he can be that player at all times. He doesn't have to necessarily take a lot of these chances that he just, it's just, it's in his nature to do so. I gave him the stat. Uh, now he's 17 and 0 as a starting quarterback when he doesn't turn the football over. I mean, they don't lose when he doesn't turn it over. So they're going to need that on Sunday. But he is he's playing at a very very high level right now. So Ryan, these two teams have not played in the playoffs against one another for two seasons now. Obviously, they've played the last several years in the regular season, which Buffalo has won more often than not. But I think we all remember how entertaining that divisional playoff was in January 2022, 42-36 goes to overtime. Um, what do you think is most different? Because it's, you know, you know how much teams and players and rosters change year to year. What do you think is most different about each of these two teams this time around? Well, clearly no Tyreek Hill. I think that's a big factor, though, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it it didn't stop the offense for Buffalo, and I and I would say you know Gabe Davis seems like a bit of an afterthought in comparison to catching four touchdowns in that game. So I mean there's a lot different. The defense is different. There's so much back end of the defense uh, injuries that that Buffalo's dealing with. You know who's going to step up at wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs? You know what does that look like? Um, there's a lot that's different for as much as the same in the quarterback play uh, of two of the best to do it in the AFC. There's a lot that has changed. There's a lot of scar tissue that Sean McDermott wears, or wears around. Um, I hope this, this matchup in this, you know, divisional round is not triggering for him. I mean, cause there's something to be said about what pressure and stress does to people. You just don't quite ever know how it's going to be applied and what you're going to do and react from it. I mean, if you had those 13 seconds over again, he would do that much differently. Would you squib kick it? Would you boot it through? Would you just jump on people as soon as the snaps on and get a hold? 
I mean, just any way to bring down that 13 seconds and how different it is and how good they were that year, I suspect they would host Cincinnati and beat them down and go to the Super Bowl. And I don't, I just don't see anybody getting in their way the rest of the way through that year, actually. And so that's something that may haunt him. And how does he respond when, let's say, something negative goes? And uh, this is a, this is a big moment for Sean McDermott, the head football coach for the Buffalo Bills. I love him to death. Uh, he's been a huge supporter of mine for for some time now, and um, so I, I want to see him uh, have a chance. I picked the Bills to win a Super Bowl this year before the season started. I have Bills San Francisco Super Bowl. I added a, a Bills at Ravens AFC Championship before the season started. So everything's kind of playing out the way that I anticipated. I didn't anticipate them to be six and six going into the right. bye week to get where they were at. <laughs> that's for sure. One of the things that happened last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers, what were your thoughts as you stood on the sidelines and every other play, it seemed like the Bills were losing a guy to injury on the def- defensive side of the, of the ball. Um, they cobbled it together and got out of there with a win. What were your thoughts about how that happens when the team, what it does to the sidelines and, and their prospects about going forward? Well, I mean, there was a lot of stuff on the sideline. You know, there was some, there was some, you know, body language stuff. You know, when Martin's hamstring issue came up, they were like, you know, hunting's going to be a big part of this. You know, make sure make sure they don't have good field position. Uh, the defensive backfield. I mean, that's a huge factor. The fact they held out Rasul Douglas, I think, made them feel pretty comfortable with what they were going to be able to do in the passing game, even if guys got banged up. Uh, and uh, and expect to have him back this week. You know. The Bernard injury, uh, that looked bad. Doesn't sound like it's necessarily as as bad as what everybody felt like it was in the moment. And then you saw Klein step up, come, you know, that that's just a, an unbelievable story. Now, you know, talking with Von Miller after the game, I was uh I was asking him some questions about the uh the depth that at edge and uh, on the defensive front. And that was the biggest thing that I think could be the difference maker in this game. The fact that they are struggling middle of the field, back end of the field on the defensive side. But where they're not, uh, they are deep up front, and they got to get to the quarterback. That's just how it's going to have to be. You get to Patrick Mahomes, you make him feel you, you make him throw it a little bit early, a little bit late, turnovers happen, guys miss passes, all that stuff. So I like their chances because of how deep the defensive line is and how they can rotate. Um, I mean, heck. Von Miller was the one coming and rushing the ends at the very end of the game after sitting on the sideline all game long, cold. And he still was getting pressures and getting after the quarterback. Daquan Jones being back, I think that's a huge deal. That allowed for Ed Oliver, I think, to make a real impact early on in that game. And so um, I I didn't – Russo's not 6'6". Russo's like 6'9", it feels like. (laughs) I'm 6'6", and I felt like I was looking up to him on the sideline. That dude's a giant. Long arms, long reach. I like their defensive front. I think that's going to be the, that's going to what that's what will make up for those injuries on the back end. I do believe. Yeah, and and taking that a step further, Ryan, the Chiefs got to play this thing on the road. Their tackles have had problems all season long. They commit a lot of penalties. What does Coach McDermott have to do to make sure he gets the one on ones that he wants on the edges to to take advantage of those matchups? To your point. Well, yeah, I I think he probably's got to come with some some different exotic blitzes. Maybe utilize, um, you know, Micah on on the perimeter, kind of bring him up into the a gap. Maybe I don't know. You know, there's a lot that could happen. Jordan Hoyer doing some different things where they can get some some double teams that have to squeeze where you get the one on ones on the outside there. And then I think you can run some games with them. You know, I think you can run some, you know, some some tackle uh, unders and, and edges coming on the inside, trying to get some inside pressure with some of those long arm big guys to make Patrick move big part of it though. Third down third down is going to be such a huge down as it always is situationally in this league, but to make sure and keep him inside the pocket. And if you do let him get outside of it, you got to have somebody out there on the edge to funnel him back into the tacklers. You cannot let him just run around and get on the perimeter and get and pick up those first downs because those are killers. Those are just absolutely monumental motivation and life-sucking killers that Patrick Mahomes has be, become a, a a star at. Now, having said that, we have no idea what Patrick Mahomes on the road in the playoffs looks like ever. He's never done it. This will be the first time. It's going to be cold. It's going to be loud. It's going to be late Sunday, all of that. And uh, uh, 
And, and so as much nerves as maybe Sean McDermott may have, having a divisional game against the Kansas City Chiefs once again, I think there's going to be a little bit of uh, nerves for Patrick Mahomes after what the season has looked like, uh, the way people have, op- you know, the optics of him a little bit this year and how he's dealt with some things and his first time on the road. How will he cope with that? Because we haven't seen it before. Good stuff, Ryan. Thanks for doing it. I hope you enjoyed your time in Buffalo. Hopefully you'll be back here for one of these games coming up, uh, maybe even the championship game. Well, I'll be in Baltimore this weekend, so if uh, if Houston pulls the upset, which I don't think they will, but if they do, yeah, I'll. Uh, I don't think I'm going to San Francisco. I told my boss, I'm like, I'm not flying across the country. But <laughs> it took me just as long to fly to Buffalo and back to New York uh, as it probably would to get me to San Francisco with the with the <laughs> lake effect. Yeah, yeah. We had some flight yeah. delays for sure. Ryan, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure we'll see you down the line. Take care. All right, fellas. Have a great game this weekend.